Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. So uh, this past week, a uh, viewer of mine, as well as a friend of mine, uh, Mike Heath, uh, who lives up in uh, Crystal Lake, Illinois, uh, not too terribly far outside the Chicago area, uh, Jeff asked me some good questions about indicators and uh, asked if I would put together a little short video kind of uh, explaining some indicator basics. So here's the situation. Uh, Jeff recently purchased a metal lathe. Uh, I know that he's owned a metal lathe in the past as well as a milling machine. I think he sold them and had a few come in and out. But he doesn't have a whole lot of machinist tools and he's wanting to get geared up to be able to do some uh, machine shop work. He watches my channel, he watches some of the other YouTube channels out there. He sees indicators being used all the time, but he's not really sure what he needs to get. And uh, as you can see, uh, just by what I have laid out on the table next to me, there's a wide variety of indicators out there uh, that you can get. And uh, they all have their pluses and minuses for different types of jobs. And uh, what we want to do today is just do a very basic introduction video to indicators, what they do, uh, how they work, uh, some very basics on how to use them. And, uh, and if you're getting new starting this, what kind of indicator do you need? Uh, this may be a refresher for some of the more experienced guys out there, but this one is aimed more toward uh, the beginners who are just getting started. So let's come in here and let me show you a selection of the indicators that I pulled out. And we'll talk about some of them, what they're used for, and then go into what indicators you may need to get for your shop if you're just getting started. So as I previously stated, there's a wide variety of uh, types of indicators that are out there. And I went through my machinist chest out here and I just pulled out uh, some of the ones that I have. And uh, some of them I use very frequently, some of them I use very infrequently, but sometimes some of these you just need for certain things. So anyway, let's get in here and uh, talk about it. So I'm going to start out with uh, just probably your most basic type of dial indicator. And, and uh, this is uh, just a regular um, plunge indicator or whatever. I'm not sure that the exact name for it. I think it just goes by dial indicator. Uh, but what it does is uh, there's a stem here. This one has a one inch range. Uh, so the maximum range on it is one inch. Uh, there's some gears and stuff that basically as, as this moves in you can see the dial moving and it gives you a very accurate measurement as to how far that dial is moving. And uh, this one is in thousandths of an inch, uh, so each one of the uh, lines on here is one one thousandth of an inch, so it's a division of one one thousandth of an inch. Uh, they also make these in metric, and uh, yes, I even have a metric one here. So as another example, this is a metric uh, dial indicator, and basically uh, each rotation of the dial is, is one uh, millimeter and each increment on the dial is one one hundredth of a millimeter. Uh, so it works exactly the same. It's uh, just calibrated for metric instead of inches. Uh, and while most of my dial indicators that I have are uh, English or, or in inches, uh, they basically work and perform the same in metric. If you're a metric user, you can choose to buy either metric or English units. Again, I'm going to probably be using English units because that's just what I work with. Why do you need one? So if you're doing machinist work and uh, you're doing a setup or you're, well, probably for this one, one of the most common uses would be dialing in, a, uh, measuring the run out on a lathe so you can dial in a four jaw chuck. And uh, as, you, the, as the piece is moving around, you'll see the, the indicator, you know, going back and forth wobbling and that tells you how much run out you have. And by making adjustments, you can make that smaller and smaller and eventually get it down to where it's, the dial's not moving at all. So. Uh, that is probably one of the most uh, common things that I use one for. So this type of indicator, in my opinion, is probably, uh, which should be probably the first one you get for most applications, particularly on a lathe. If you're running a lathe, get a good indicator like this. Well, another common question that I get is, what brand do I purchase? Does it really matter what brand I purchase? Well, I will tell you right away that I am a big fan of quality tools. Uh, I believe that when you buy quality tools, uh, you buy them once, you don't have to buy them over and over and over again. And as such, I'm generally not a big fan of buying uh, a lot of the cheap import tools that come from China and Taiwan and places like that. I prefer to spend my money on quality, American made, a lot of the European brands out there that are uh, good quality, uh, Mitsutoyo, Japanese brand. Uh, you know, you, you're not going to go wrong buying quality. Uh, but as a, my one exception to that general rule might be with indicators. Uh, 
and I'm still a big fan of quality. I, this is my go-to indicator, the Starrett. This is a model uh, 25-341, measures to a thousandth inch. That's the one that is on my indicator stand most of the time. I've also got this really nice Ames here that is another favorite of mine. This is a really old indicator, probably made in the 50s, and I actually sent it back to Ames and had them rebuild it. It's, it's just such a quality instrument. Uh, but, you know, this indicator here, this stared indicator here, you're probably looking at about $150 for a, a new one. Probably the same ballpark for this Ames. You can still get the Ames. Uh, whereas this one here, this is a Shars uh, made in China, and uh, it's about 20 bucks. Big difference in price. And I will tell you that I have been more than happy with this Shards indicator. Uh, this one here has a magnet on the back. I use it a lot on the lathe. Uh, I stick it down on the ways when I'm, I'm measuring something. And it holds up well. And when you're looking at $20 versus $150, you can buy a lot of $20 indicators. This one here, it's going to wear out. It's going to break a lot quicker than the Starrett under normal wear and tear conditions. There's no doubt about it. But indicators, uh, quite honestly, can sometimes get a good bit of abuse. You know, they're on indicator stand, they're laying around, they get knocked over, they get banged up. And while I wouldn't necessarily call them a disposable item in the machine shop, uh, you know, an argument could be made that, yeah, they are kind of disposable. So, you know, a, a $20 Shars indicator will do you well, as well as a lot of the other imports, Harbor Freight, some of those guys. Um, you know, the quality on them, I don't think is quite as good, uh, but it's probably good enough for most applications. Uh, so if you're looking to save a little bit of money on your first indicator, go ahead and buy a lower quality one. And then as you get more deeper into the hobby and have an opportunity to pick up a more expensive one, uh, pick up something like a Starrett. I'll also say that if you buy a good name brand indicator like the Starrett or Ames or some of the other companies that are still in business, you can buy a used one online and uh, very often for pretty cheap. And even if you have to send these off and have them rebuilt, you know, when you send them off and have it rebuilt, you basically have a brand new indicator again. And uh, the cost of getting a new, uh, one of these indicators rebuilt, it's probably about half the price of a new indicator. That's a good ballpark. So if you know, it's a $150 indicator, you're probably gonna spend 75 bucks having a complete rebuild done on it. Uh, but again, when you get it back, you basically have a new indicator. So that's another way that, you know, if you want to take a chance on buying a used indicator, uh, you know, keep that in mind that, hey, if something is wrong with it, about half the price of new is about what it's going to cost. And I can either send it back to the factory uh, or you can send it off to one of the many uh, services out there, that, such as uh, Long, in Long Island Indicator that does rebuilds on a lot of brands and uh, they do an excellent job. So type one, this is definitely a type of indicator that I would recommend, uh, you know, the main thing is to get a, a decent one. Uh, you can save a little bit of money there. So you've bought your first indicator. That's great, but you're only part way there. The next thing you really need to have is a good indicator holder, something that's going to hold this indicator to allow you to use it uh, and for various setups that you may have. Now, uh, so here's an example. Here's my indicator and uh, we'll put it in the holder. And now this is going to hold it and uh, I can position this indicator pretty much any way I want it uh, to come in and indicate on whatever part I want. So I told you, you could save a little bit of money on your indicator if you want to. Your indicator holder is a totally different story. You need to get a good quality indicator holder. You can have the most expensive and accurate indicator in the world, but if you have a crappy holder that it's mounted to, it's not going to hold that part, that indicator, nice and still and steady the indicator doesn't matter. It's useless. You can't use it. So this is where you want to make sure that you do not cut corners. Now, and as an example, uh, when I was first getting started in this many years ago, I bought this little snake uh, type indicator holder. I had actually used one. I'm not necessarily saying don't get this type uh, because I have used like a good stare before that was excellent. Um, this one here is a cheap import. Uh, and no matter how hard I try, it just will not hold an indicator steady enough for it to be useful. In my opinion, this is garbage. Uh, this, was, this was money that was wasted. I could have spent it on something good. Uh, what I typically use, and there's a lot of indicator holders out there on the market, but what I highly recommend, and I think if you watch a lot of the other channels on YouTube, 
pretty much everybody now is using these Noga indicator holders. And uh, this is an absolutely high quality uh, indicator holder. You're not going to find anything better on the market. There are copies out there. Uh, I haven't tried them. I don't know how well they work. They're probably similar, but I'm telling you guys, spend your money and get a good indicator holder. Uh, the Nogas are absolutely wonderful. Uh, you just loosen that dial up and you can position this thing any way you want to. Uh, and then when you tighten it back up, it locks back down. I've even got this great big one here. I quite honestly use this one more for holding a camera than I do an indicator. But sometimes if I, in some applications, I will pull this out and use it for an indicator holder as well. Uh, but Noga, remember that. Just go buy one. Uh, save your money. They are a little pricey. Uh, you know, this, this indicator holder. I'm guessing it's probably around $120 to $175, depending on which one you get and what features you have. Uh, they make one that has a fine adjust up here in the top. They make one that has the fine adjust in the bottom. For this type of indicator, uh, even though I have the one that adjusts in the top, I like the one that adjusts in the bottom better. Uh, and you can look at the options on those. Um, the fine adjust in the top does work better in other applications, but for this type of indicator, uh, this is what I recommend. I leave this indicator on this uh, Noga indicator holder most of the time. It doesn't even come off. It just stays on there. When I need it, I go grab it. It's ready to go. So anyway, this right here is your first type of indicator uh, that I would highly recommend that you get for basic machine shop work, particularly working on the lathe and also on the milling machine. So the second type of indicator that I think that most people are going to need for just basic machine shop work is a good test indicator. It's a little bit smaller indicator, has a smaller uh, range of movement than the, uh, the regular type of dial indicator. And uh, this one here, uh, most of them have just a little small probe on the bottom. And again, for doing more very fine adjustment work. So um, this particular set here is a Starrett called a best, our last word, uh, last word indicator set. And uh, quite honestly, this is probably my go-to indicator set for doing test work. Uh, not because it's necessarily the best indicator on the market, but because it's in this nice set that has all the little um, attachments for mounting it. And, uh, you know, for a lot of things, this is just, it's nice to have everything in one place. Uh, quite honestly, some of these other little um, test indicators are probably a little bit more accurate um, than this indicator. But again, I like this as a set, it comes in a box. You can buy just the indicator, but uh, if, you, if you try to find one, get the whole set that has all the pieces in it. It'll make your life a lot easier uh, for a lot of the, the things you'll use uh, this particular indicator on. So uh, the last word indicator here that I have, um, it's uh, in increments of one thousandths of an inch. Uh, so if you're using it for something like setting up, tramming in a, a vise on a milling machine, thousandth of an inch is fine. Uh, you come over to this one, this is a brown and sharp uh, best test indicator, and it actually has uh, increments on it to a half thousandth. Uh, so there's a, a big line and there's a small line in there, that small line is a half thousandth. So basically does the same thing. It's uh, got a little probe down here in the bottom and uh, it works basically the same way. But this one here, the increments on it, I go to a half thousandth. Uh, and there are times when you will need to go that fine, but for most applications, a thousandth of an inch is, is plenty. I would say if you're new getting started and you're just looking for an indicator, uh, you know, something like this last word, you're not going to go wrong, even though it's only to a thousandth of an inch. And uh, you get over to this one. This is another uh, Brown and Sharp Best Test. Uh, this one here actually will indicate to a ten thousandth of an inch. Very, very fine uh, uh, adjustments on here, movements on here. Uh, it only has about uh, ten thousandths uh, play in it, uh, so it's, it's for very fine adjustments. But it'll go down uh, to a ten thousandth of an inch. You know, this one here is, is, is probably more used on a surface plate uh, for doing very, very fine measurements. Uh, it has its place, and I'm not saying don't get one or you'll never need one, but for the guy getting started in the machine shop, this is probably measuring at a level that you probably don't need to be measuring at unless you're doing something like tool and die work. Uh, very, very accurate tool and die work. Uh, so again, you know, the, you can get different resolutions, but for the beginning machine that's getting started, something that goes to a thousandth is more than adequate. Um, these uh, indicators you can also mount like on your Noga. 
uh, to hold them. But again, I really like this set, and you know, there are other brands out there that have similar things, but that have the little accessories in here. Probably the biggest thing I use this for is tramming in a vise on the milling machine. And uh, the nice thing is, is that I can pull out this little piece right here. Uh, that fits up in a collet on the milling machine. Uh, come in here, whoops, uh, put my indicator on that little arm. This goes in the collet on the milling machine. And now I can swipe this back and forth along the face of my vise and uh, very easily indicate it in. And I have everything I need in this set uh, to be able to do it. And it has a lot of other attachments in here for other types of setups. Um, but that's a real handy one. This one here, uh, you can mount that like in a lathe. Uh, so it's almost like a tool bar or you can put in a vise or whatever. Mount your indicator down here on the end. Uh, there are other holders in here for other applications as well. Uh, but anyway, a good test indicator, another one that I would get, again, uh, for a beginning machinist, think of uh, tramming in a, uh, a vise on a milling machine. I actually shot a video a while back doing that, and I'll put a link up if you're interested in seeing uh, this uh, last word indicator uh, in use. And I'm not saying the last word is the best one out there, uh, but for a good beginner set, this is, uh, again, my go-to test indicator that I use all the time. So this is another indicator I want to show, and I don't necessarily think this is something that most people are probably going to need, at least not right away. Uh, but if you get an opportunity to get one, this is a handy indicator. And uh, I don't use it a lot, but when I need it, man, it's, it's a nice set. And uh, this is a this is a Starrett uh, number 196, uh, this particular indicator. I'm not sure what the set is. It may also be a 196. But this indicator, instead of having the plunge on the bottom, it's a back plunge indicator. So you got a plunge back here on the back that moves in and out. And uh, when it does, of course, it moves uh, the dial on here. This one also measures to a thousandth of an inch. And it comes in a nice set, uh, again, uh, for doing all kinds of uh, fancy setups. You got clamps that you can mount it onto, bars. Uh, you can uh, you know, use these in your milling machine or what have you. Got some snugs in here. This is a real nice feature for this as well. Uh, you can set this up like this. With this rocker. And uh, now this can actually go down inside of a hole. It's an inside hole attachment. Uh, so this can go up into a tiny little hole and uh, it moves the indicator. So that's really nice for doing a little small hole. They also make a hole attachment uh, that goes on a regular indicator. Uh, I'll show one of those in a minute. Um, but nice set here has a couple of different tips that you can put on there for different things. Um, again, uh, probably not one that I use a lot, but sometimes you just need one of these. And you can use this for also uh, trimming in a, a vise on a mill machine. You just mount this right into your uh, mill machine, put that up in the arbor, and then you come in here and run this up and down the jaw on your chuck, and it does the same thing. Uh, I don't like using this one for that application just because you got to have the vise open real wide to get it down in there, and the actual indicator is down below the surface, whereas a test indicator, uh, you know, the dial is well above uh, the area that you're indicating off of, but it will work for that. Back plunge indicator, another nice uh, indicator to have. So here are a couple of uh, attachments that you can get to go on your indicator as well. So this is an inside hole attachment, just kind of very similar to the one we showed on that back plunge indicator. It just fits up over the shank and, and clamps down here onto the barrel of your indicator and it works the same way. So now you can take this up inside of a little small hole and uh, it will indicate uh, and let you know how it's working uh, in there. So that one is for going up in a hole. This one here is a similar thing, but this is more got a right angle on there. So instead of going straight in, it's at a 90 degrees and it just pivots on there just like such and uh, allows you to get up into some tiny places. So if you got a little flange on the lathe or something that you need to indicate in, sometimes these little indicator attachments, uh, inside hole attachments or what have you, uh, work very well. So uh, this one here is a 670B 
uh, and a Starrett number and this other one is a 671 uh, if you want to look those up. Uh, very handy to have those uh, and, and kind of adds a lot of functionality to just a regular dial indicator for doing special jobs. Another thing that I'd highly recommend uh, is get a selection of tips uh, that you can put on these indicators. So this little tip on the bottom will unscrew and uh, you can grab all kinds of different uh, little tips uh, to go on here depending on what you're indicating on. So for example, there's one that goes to a point. Uh, you know, we got some that have some extensions on there. Uh, just all kinds of different uh, uh, tips on the bottom uh, that make it real handy. Uh, for doing odd jobs. Uh, I really like these little button end ones too. Uh, for sometimes you want to have a really big surface that you're indicating off of. So they make little button tips as well that will fit on these. So there you go guys. A uh, basic introduction to indicators and uh, what type you might want to be looking out for if you're getting new into this hobby uh, or this business and uh, need to get a good indicator or two. There are a lot of indicators out there, so hopefully uh, this will help you make some good selections uh, as you're investing in your shop and getting some good tooling uh, to put to use. We'll talk to you later.